the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line and running backs can't match up with the Minnesota Vikings front seven. They okay. just can't. They just can't. I mean, when you start looking at Linville Joseph and Everson Griffin, Aaron Kendricks and Anthony Barr, they're just better than that Eagles offensive front. So if you're Especially done, since Jason Peters has been done for the last two yeah, months. Yeah, exactly. You're talking about Vitae replacement right. left tackle. So when you start looking at the matchups, it doesn't bode well for the Philadelphia Eagles. So if you're Doug Peterson, if you ask your offense to run with direct runs, it's literally the head coach asking his offense to run into a brick wall. So you're going to have to avoid that. What you're going to have to do is challenge the eye discipline of those guys on the second and third level of that Minnesota Vikings defense. And you have things in your offense that you can do that with. The RPOs, the run pass options. You saw it in the second and third quarters when Nick Foles had that mm -hmm. play action fake to the running back on a dive and then you took advantage of the vacated area by the linebackers and threw the pop pass in that intermediate zone. So you're going to have to take advantage of those types of plays. You're going to have to be able to use stacks and bunches, different formations, motions. Look at what the Saints did to the Vikings in the second half of that divisional round matchup. In the fourth quarter, that first play where you had the toss action to Mark Ingram, but it was actually Alvin Kamara going the other way. Right. If you look at the fake toss to yeah. Alvin Kamara, and then it was a pop pass to Michael Thomas for a touchdown. Those are the types of things that you're mm. going to have to do if you're Doug Peterson in order to get your playmakers in space and get some production. Explain one thing to the audience. You said direct runs will be running directly into a brick wall. Yeah. Explain just for the audience the difference between a direct run or and the, and the things you're describing. What's a direct run? A direct, direct runs are typically in between the tackles. Right. You're talking about yes. dives, inside zones. It's one of those plays of when you're a sports fan, you're like, why'd they run that play? <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Right, right, right up the middle or off the off the guard inside the tackles exactly. is a direct run. Those are direct runs. Okay, so you're saying they need to get out on the edges to have any shot against this Vikings front well, seven. And, 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 and not even really get out on the edges. I'm talking about play action fake with the Got perimeter yes. runs and then use passes, you know, raise up now passes, throwing it out of the perimeter, two receivers mm -hmm. in a stack, and being able to get those guys opportunities that way. Because football comes down to blocking and tackling. Eventually, if you have enough opportunities with your skill position players, one of those guys is going to break one. So that's what you got to look forward to if you're Doug Peterson. That's the only chance that you have to be able to win on the offensive side of the ball because the matchups don't bode well for you in this game. So here is here's why this is such a tough matchup for the Eagles. The Vikings, as CC mentioned almost just in passing in our morning meeting today, they are 14 and 3. So they're four, so they've lost three times this year. All three of those losses have one thing in common. They've they allowed at least 90 yards rushing in each of those games. Two of them they allowed 100 plus yards mm -hmm. rushing. They only did that seven times all year, allow even 90 yards rushing. The one way to beat the team this year that has been a common component for their three losses is you have to have an effective ground game. What you're describing is that's going to be hard to come by for this Eagles team, but that's the only way I think they can score points, especially when you consider Philadelphia the last three weeks since Nick Foles took over after the Giants game, this offense has scored two touchdowns. In three games, the Philadelphia offense has scored two touchdowns touchdowns so if they are going to pull off what I think would be a bigger upset than the one they pulled off in the first round or the second round but their yeah, first playoff yeah. game it's 10-7 it's 13-9 mm -hmm. it's going to be to me that the Eagles defense is going to have to match the Vikings defense because I don't see how a Nick Foles led Eagles offense even with good good but not great running backs can get to 17, 20, 24 points on this Vikings D. Uh, there's three things if, if I'm Philadelphia and, and their offense that I'm concerned with. Uh, the number one thing I'm concerned with, how do I block Linval Joseph? Now, you talking about a brick wall? Now, this is a grown man. Now, we say, oh, all these guys are grown. He's the biggest. No, he's different. He's, he's, different. The, he's the biggest man on the field. He plays the nose stack. He plays the three technique. And Mike Zimmer utilizes him to be able to set the tempo for this defense. If you don't see Kelsey, who is a undersized, and what makes Kelsey a good center is he's very athletic. He likes to get on the edge, but you can't snap the ball and get him on the edge because Linval Joseph will be in his hip pocket and be in the backfield. The Vikings, they predicate this defense on penetration. The other thing, number two, is um, Sandejo, Andrew Sandejo, when he gets hurt in the third quarter of the Saints game, the safety, the game changed because he is an unsung hero. 
All right? He allows the other safety to be able to roam, hit man to be able to play free and inside the box. He allows the corners to be able to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. He directs a lot of traffic, so people don't know who he is. He is a significant player. He had a concussion. I did see him in the locker room after the game, talk to him. He looks to be healthy. Now, they haven't announced it yet, but look to see if he's healthy in this game. And the third thing is, and one of the reasons why this Vikings defense is special, is Trey Wayans. He's another first-round pick first for round Michigan. Pick. Stick. Yep. Michigan State, he's the third in his third year. They got so many first round picks on this defense. People don't talk about him. He's actually the fastest guy on the Vikings team. So you match him up on Torrey Smith. You put Xavier Rhodes, you put him on Alshon Jeffries. And to me, how are the Eagles going to make big plays? So they have to try to build manufacture through misdirection or either through play action pass with these matchups that the Vikings and this is some of the personnel that the Vikings have. And as a fan, I like to when you're down to two to four teams, get people familiar with some names that sure. they don't know. New England knows that Blake Bortles is the quarterback. All right. So Tom, he will not force a turnover. He knows that they can punt the ball. He's going to have plenty of time. So he won't be rushed. It won't be like Pittsburgh. If he was playing Pittsburgh. Ben Roethlisberger, the, you know, the triplets, it's a different set of pressure because they can put a lot of points on you. So Tom will be very, very patient. Gronk and the running backs, I believe, will be the featured part of this offense. And I wouldn't be surprised if they negated the running game, New England. I believe the weather's going to be unseasonably a little bit warm, and I believe they're going to throw the ball more than we ever thought going into this game. All right, before I get to my thoughts on it, it is something we touched on yesterday, but I want to reiterate it today, get your opinion out there on this, because the general conventional wisdom, I know you tell me, stop listening to all these podcasts, stop doing all that. No, listen the, to me. Okay, right. Stop listening but the to general, them. a lot of the commentary surrounding this game is, the Jags are going to put Jalen Ramsey on Gronk. Their best defensive back on the Patriots' best weapon. Jalen's also a big corner. He's 6'1". He's strong. That's their best chance. That was something you told me Monday morning off the air. Throw it away. They can't do that con continually throughout the game. Tell them, why can't you just say Jalen, Gronk, one-on-one, -on -one, Jalen be better? Because Jalen is more important to the defense playing the cornerback spot that he plays because then they can play zone or play man and you don't know that. If you line him up on Gronk and play man-to-man, -man, 50, 60 plays, Tom Brady knows you're in man-to-man. -man. So it's easier to set a pick on him. It's also easier to use Gronk as a decoy because you know exactly what they're doing. And more importantly than Jalen being on Gronk, you know everyone else is in man-to-man. -man. So Tom can pick out the weakest link. It could be a linebacker. It could be a safety. It could be someone else that he would pick on deliberately because you've given him too much information. And the other thing you had mentioned was if they were to do that, the Pats would just run the ball repeatedly. That you'd be Gronk would knock him off the field because he would have to line up on his head if he's guarding a man-to-man, -man, and Gronk would come off and run block him and, and like he blocked the guy in Indianapolis where he threw him out the club. Right, yeah. That's what he would be doing to Jalen Ramsey a whole bunch in the game. One of the things we talked about the last couple of weeks with this Patriots team is they want to get out to a fast start, get out there, maybe no huddle, whatever it is. But you're saying that's not as important this time. It is not no. absolutely necessary for them to get out and do that. They could slow the game down from the start. I mean, as a team, no one collectively is connected as much as the offense, the defense, and the special teams. So their offensive players, they know what their capability of. Even though they're worried about their game plan, Jacksonville's defense, but they've been informed of who's on the other side. Right. And it's not to throw shade at Blake Bortles. If it was someone else that didn't have an offense that ran through their quarterback and ran through their tailback, they would do the same thing. So they'll be in sync realizing it's about field position. It's about getting a lead. It's about forcing Jacksonville to throw the football. And it's about, for New England, getting chunks of yardage on first down. So they stay out of second and long and third and long situations. The Jags defense, let's put a bow on it with this, is coming off its two most productive games of the year as far as a quarterback pressure standpoint. You might say they just allowed 42 points. Mm -hmm. I get that. The only two games all year, the only two games in the defense in the playoffs, I should say, were – you had 20-plus pressures. It was the Jags in round one and the Jags last week. So that Jags front is playing very, very well right now. They are going to have to play the best game Lights they have out. ever played in order to beat the New England Patriots.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.